Today on CityCast Boise, the resignation of six Ada County Central Committee officials is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the latest Idaho GOP drama. Lucky for us, Blake Hunter is here with a rundown on the infighting, including purity tests, alleged bullying, and the big ugly divide over the open primary initiative. It's Wednesday, October 25th. I'm Emma Arnold, and this is what Boise is talking about. Hi, Blake. Hey, Emma. So the Idaho GOP is fighting amongst themselves again, but uh, this isn't a new situation for us here, is it? It's really not. There's this kind of growing sense and growing reality that there's the, uh, a faction divide within the GOP. It's funny, when I was researching for this story and for this article that I wrote that kind of goes with this podcast episode, I was looking back to like two years ago, and essentially the story that we were talking about at the time was former Lieutenant Governor Janice McGeehan butting heads with Governor Little over COVID mask stuff, uh, the, the bare minimum that we had here in Idaho. And Maybe I just blocked that out of my memory. I completely or forgot. In yeah. fact, when you said her name, it's like I I had completely forgotten that she was lieutenant governor. My brain has disassociated from that entire situation. Uh, clearly. Yeah. Yeah, that was. And that was such a fight. I mean, it, it made national news. It did. It did. It made huge national news. And that I mean, even that was just like a couple of years ago. And this this fight has been going on for even longer. I mean, if you want to look at the Idaho Freedom Foundation's um lobbying power, essentially lobbying power over the past like 10 years or so. And a lot of this actually, you know, we've we've been talking lately about the open primary ballot initiative. Um, a lot of this growing divide um, comes from this high, high concentration of political power within the Republican Party. Like they just dominate everything within Idaho politics. And some of this can be traced back to in 2012, when the Republican Party closed their primaries. Um, and so the the main political fight on the ballots uh, around the state uh, became within the Republican Party. And so, you know, we're well into a decade or well over a decade into that process now. And the the fights are still continuing. Yeah, they it's funny, you know, you brought up uh, the IFF, Idaho Freedom Foundation thing. And it made me think we ha- did a, an episode a while back with Republican Senator uh, Jeff Schroeder, where yeah. he came on and talked about exactly what you're saying, this this butting heads between, you know, sort of old school Idaho Republicans and the since 2012, this newer fringe element that has come in and has gotten a lot of traction within mm-hmm. the party. But like, let us tell us where things currently stand, like what forces are at play right now? Yeah, I would say that the most important figure, individual, like single person uh, to know about within the Idaho GOP infighting right now is Dorothy Moon. And she's the chairwoman of the Idaho uh, Republican Party. And she was elected last summer, the summer of 2022. So she's been there for a while, but she is one of those kind of far right figures who has moved up. She said that she was motivated to run because the 2020 presidential election was stolen from Donald Trump, which we just know is not true. And so that was a motivating factor for her. She's allied with a lot of really far right militia groups, uh, including a uh, very openly white supremacist senator, state senator from Arizona. Um, And so that she's she's kind of the main force here, and so she's been dividing uh, a lot of people in in kind of these a few separate issues that we're going to be talking about. I, I could be mistaken, but within this their own party, this kind of seems to be coming to a head right now. And one of the reasons we wanted to talk about this was this recent shakeup in the Ada County GOP, which I I have seen a li- you know obviously I've seen news stories about, but I'm not hearing people I know talk about it, and it um, feels like a much bigger story. So six, the six members of this Ada, of the Ada County Republican Central Committee, uh, including the chair and three of the vice chairs, the treasurer, all essentially signed, resigned in protest to these rules that the Idaho GOP has implemented. Uh, and that those rules came from a summer committee meeting. You know, there's a big, huge kind of convention that happens in the summer where the Idaho GOP sets their rules, changes anything, kind of touches base a few months ahead of the legislative session, right? Um, And so some of them, some of these rules are pretty 
big and like there one of them includes it it's been called like purity testing quote unquote uh so a new rule that was passed essentially re- requires or bars any voter who has changed their political party uh affiliation uh within the last 12 months from voting for any republican uh, in any republican election for the next 12 months so essentially i i did kind of a breakdown on this a while ago but essentially it means that there's kind of this period where if you want to become a Republican, a Republican voter, uh, and change your affiliation to that, you essentially have to wait. You could wait up to two years to actually be able to vote. And a lot of people raised a lot of alarm bells in this. And it's not surprising that the Ada County uh, GOP officials spoke out against this, partially because uh, we're one of the more purple you know, counties in, in the state. There are a lot of people who might be kind of on the fence between uh, Democrat and Republicans, especially people moving from out of state, um, maybe want to change their affiliation once they get here kind of thing. And so that that's a big one. There's also um, a bunch of censuring that, you know, county parties have done uh, against lawmakers after the 2023 session. And one thing that the Idaho GOP Central Committee did was remove voting power for uh, essentially like the women voters and the young like college Republicans from their central committee. So, you know, representatives of those groups can no longer vote on their central committee, which raised a lot of important red flags. And so those those were a big reason, a lot of the big reasons that the Ada County GOP officials cited for leaving. And they called it an oligarchy, uh, how, how the current GOP is being run in the state. They said it was bullying, unrepublican, and said the energy of the party is more about infighting than collaboration, more about beating each other than beating Democrats. So joint resignations are such a good way to send a message. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. And like you said, like, you know, there are concerns that like these policies will inhibit the growth of the Republican Party because people can't, people who are just moving here or people who've decided to, you can't, you absolutely can't, which seems very counterintuitive to growing your party. And even like you mentioned, these these purity tests, and I saw in their statement that they said that, you know, uh, candidates were being pulled into like tribunals basically where they're being censored and stripped of party support for five years for not voting the way Dorothy Moon wants them to vote. So Mm -hmm. and you know it's what's interesting is this is the uh, Ada County resignations not an isolated incident like these shakeups are happening all over the state. There's this lawsuit out of Bingham County which thank God you covered in the newsletter because I have found the whole thing like it's kind of convoluted and confusing isn't it yeah so this is a very confusing thing because it's such an internal partisan affair here but essentially what happened is that uh the bingham county republican chairman uh decided that he wanted to resign in the summer and um the central committee put forward elections for replacing him uh and then the the state gop said that they had violated some meetings law in, in putting forth those elections and tried to step in to create their own election and part of the complaint against uh dorothy moon stepping in to create these new elections is that she picked a date when uh allegedly she knew that a lot of the bingham county folks would be out of town so they wouldn't be able to uh vote in that situation um the claim against her is that she's trying to handpick people. Uh, a judge actually did step in with a temporary restraining order, uh, blocking the state Republican Party from actually calling forth an election for the Bingham County GOP. And so it's just kind of this back and forth of both groups have said that the other group violated some internal meetings and elections law. And the Bingham County folks are essentially saying, like, uh, claiming that accusing Moon of trying to hand select uh, the new leadership for this party. And I I do want to mention, like, Bingham County, if people aren't familiar, uh, the seat is in Blackfoot. It's right in between uh, Pocatello and Idaho Falls. This is a huge GOP stronghold. I mean, eastern Idaho really just is. There's, I think there's one state legislator or two uh, in Pocatello who's a Democrat, but everywhere else in eastern Idaho is a really, really big stronghold. Huge donors for national GOP races as well. And so it's a really interesting place for this this situation to be coming out of. Um, and it's specifically, you know, we, we're talking about these trends of GOP infighting over the years. This one in particular is um, anti-Dorothy Moon, essentially, is what's going on. Yeah. And 
speaking of like Republican strongholds, in addition to this Bingham County situation, uh, you also have this pretty surprising. I mean, honestly, watching this whole thing in West Bonner County School District unfold, where a former Idaho Freedom Foundation analyst, uh, Brandon Durst, went up. He was appointed uh, uh, as superintendent and uh, watching the community there, very, very conservative community. I mean, as Republican, more Republican than Bingham County, I'm not totally sure, but watching them oust him uh, has been pretty interesting and and surprising, honestly, to me, because when I saw he got hired up there, I thought, well, you know, yeah, sure, that makes sense. He uh, he believes a lot of what they believe up there. And so that mm-hmm. totally makes sense. But then cool. they did a recall of the board members who uh, appointed him to the job. And yeah, I, I was just pretty shocked by that whole situation. Yeah, it is a really interesting one. I haven't paid as close attention as I'd like to it, but it is such an interesting story. Durst is so fascinating as a character because he actually used to be a Democratic senator or a Democratic lawmaker for Boise. But yeah, so this is a completely different aspect of this GOP infighting that we've been talking about. You know, we talked about Moon uh, with the state versus county stuff. We talked about uh, these new kind of closed door rules and policies. But this one is a little bit different in that it is kind of like you said earlier, a little bit more grassroots, a little bit more people. You know, it's not easy to recall an elected official, but they've done it. I should I feel like I should say I am semi related to one of the uh, <laughs> my people. favorite little tidbit. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's so uh, funny. to me. One of the people who started the recall is my husband's mother's hu- husband's sister. So you're gonna have to write that one down. For I me, don't know yeah. <laughs> what that makes her to me. But she of course is, you're related. I love that. Yeah, of course it's Idaho. I'm a little bit related to most people. So, but she's like you know I guess step. My would be my step aunt in law, okay. <laughs> I guess. But but I don't. I've actually never met her. I don't know her. I just sort of know her through uh, my my mother in law. And it was so. She's very conservative. In fact, yeah. all three people who started this uh, recall, a very very conservative values. Even some far right values, I would say. But watching this, like populist response to an out-of-towner but being put into the superintendent position and immediately came in um, attacking the school, you know, saying that it, the whole thing. OK, and I'm, we don't have time to get into it. I really if you don't know about this, because like literally watching this unfold and kind of having this little insider view because of family members, it was like an episode of succession, except like small town, yeah. big drama. I was even like somebody should write a show about this because, I mean, you have this tiny community like in the end, it's like 475 people voting uh, on this recall. Like it was yeah. so wild to watch this unfold, but also kind of gave me hope in a way for for Idaho because it was watching like old school Republican Idaho pushing back against fringe far right politics. I mean, one of the big things uh, that IFF and that Brandon Durst believe in is the destruction of the public school system. I mean, we've yeah. been very vocal about that. And watching this community rally around their teachers, rally around their administra- administrators for the school and be like, no, we reject that. Be like, you're not coming after our library. You're not coming after our teachers. You're not coming after books and classrooms. It was so it was so interesting because you're watching people who I feel like five months ago would have been like, yeah, I support, you know, the the recall uh, of uh, um, the Meridian library director. Yeah, absolutely. But when that's happening in their own town to their their own library teachers and librarians pushed back really heavily. And I thought it was almost like a test case for the Idaho Freedom Foundation to try and you know, I think they thought, oh, we'll be able to come in and sort of take over these. And that's been their plan. That's what they've been doing for the last very effectively mm-hmm. is taking over school boards, library boards, these small local government institutions that nobody was really paying attention to five years ago. Uh, not very many people Absolutely. anyway. And thinking that they can just sweep swoop in and watching the town of Priest River push back so hard and so effectively. We were up there the week before the recall. Every single person you talked to was wearing a recall shirt. Recall signs everywhere you went, uh, like a rally while we were there. And it was just it was really a a big change politically from what I've I've seen. And these are this is Trump country. This is everybody there has a Trump flag and a recall sign. (laughs) Yeah, which is so interesting. And I think 
I mean, I'm sure that IFF uh, is shaking a little bit right now and just kind of trying to do a bit of an identity crisis. I don't know. They need to do they need to go on a retreat. I want to say one more thing that was interesting before we move on from that. And that was that Brandon Durst and sort of his camp up there were, in fact, the Sunday that we were up there, people were really pissed because someone from Durst camp had at the one of the churches up there had um, like leafleted everybody's car and it was calling the recall supporters woke and socialist mm. and communist. And uh, it was sort of interesting. I mean, I have fought with my uh, right wing family plenty of up there. And that's <laughs> usually the terms I get woke, socialist, uh, et cetera, uh, communist, uh, none of which are inaccurate. So I'm always <laughs> like, thank you so much. But uh, but it was just interesting watching them have those same things thrown at them for basically being like, we want public schools. I know. It's kind of an identity crisis. Yeah. Yeah. So what has chairwoman of the GOP Dorothy Moon's response been to these challenges to her authority? Yeah. So it's it's been a lot of uh, denial, to be honest. So as far as, you know, the Bingham County situation, obviously that's an ongoing lawsuit, but she has continuously said, that's not, you know, I'm not trying to hand select people. You're, you're, you're the one violating uh, meetings and elections law laws. Her, her strategy right now seems to just be to like bowl forward. Full bore, she's following through with her policies. And, and to be clear, I mean, we're talking about her as if she's completely isolated. She's not. She has a ton of allies in the, in the Idaho GOP. Obviously, she has a ton of allies in the uh, state house where she was. A, she's a former lawmaker there, and so she's she's certainly not alone. She certainly has the backing to at least follow through with a lot of these policies and ideas that she has. Um, but essentially, right now, she's she's denying that there are divisions in the first place. She's denying that there is infighting. Um, so I'm I'm interested to see how long that can last. Yeah. What is what does it all mean, Blake? Like, what does this mean for the long term strategy of the GOP? Like, I, I, do, I just don't know how this plays out long term. That was actually one of the interesting things that um, one of the representatives from the Idaho, I think it's called Idaho Young Republicans, who went to this meeting where they, you know, the Idaho Re- Re- Young Republicans lost their ability to vote for the Central Committee for the state. Uh, one of the things that they pointed out is like taking away the ability for young voters to to change their political party affiliation. That, that's not really a good uh, policy idea for the Republicans because, you know, the Republican Party, obviously nationally, but even in the state of Idaho as well, um, is aging. You know, there's still people in their 20s and 30s are still predominantly Republican here. Uh, but things are changing. You know, the times are changing. And I, it's interesting that the GOP is trying to uh, kind of kick young people out or at least sending a message here that they don't want young people here, but they can kind of get away with it. So, we, you know, the Republican Party has such predominant control in Idaho. Nationally, Republicans have to be worried, have to be kind of constantly looking over their shoulder to consider, are Democrats going to swoop in and take this seat? Can, you know, a more moderate Republican and a Democrat beat me out here if I really go fully off the wheels and just really start spout, spouting alt-right stuff? And obviously, you know, Congress is increasingly made up of far-right individuals and politicians, but still, that's, that's a consideration that people have to be cons- like thinking about nationally. We just really don't have have that. That's not the dynamic in Idaho. Um, there are very, very few uh, districts or counties that could even be considered uh, purple or possibly like swing or battleground right now. And that may change in the future, but they it's it, it's going to be an interesting thing to watch and really quite scary to watch play out because this pitting of moderate Republicans, kind of more traditional Republicans versus far-right Republicans, that's where all of the political discourse and actual political decision-making is really happening in Idaho. And it leaves, one, a lot of people out of the conversation, and two, it means that who knows how far this stuff could go. And it's also getting very, very expensive for Idaho taxpayers. You know, like, that we talked about this just recently with like uh, Idaho's trans bathroom bill. Um, Idaho taxpayers are paying for that for the lawsuit against that. And there are so, so many laws in the past few years that the GOP has pushed through knowing that they're going to be uh, taken to court over it. And they they don't care. Like it's it's something that they can fund and they don't need to worry about uh, opposition from the left. We've watched 
year after year, the bills coming out of the legislature get uh, harsher and more fascist mm-hmm. and more impossible to defend in court. Yeah. Uh, just And also, so many of the bills we've had in the last two years have had this litigious element, this uh, citizen suing citizen litigious yes. element to yeah. it, that they know that they probably can't get a criminal mm-hmm. law passed, but the civil one that civil they can side. get to, which is just going to create a ton, even if the like the bills pass, a ton, creates a ton more chaos yeah. uh, and, and financial hardship for a ton of people and institutions. So I feel like we say it all the time, but it's like I watch years ago watching the Tea Party start to take over the Mm -hmm. Republicans. I was like, I think a lot of us were like, you're making a huge mess for yourself. This is going to be so hard to control this element that you're fostering and letting take over your party. And it's it's that's exactly what happened. And I thought we would be laughing about it. Instead, we're just (laughs) worried about our friends and ourselves and uh it's just worsening. It just keeps worsening. So figure your shit out, Idaho <laughs> Republicans, please. We are uh, at your mercy as usual. I think that we would also be remiss to consider kind of traditional old school Republicans as victims here. Like mm-hmm. they are trying to control the situation. They're trying to use the growing far right power uh, to do what they want to do and to push things forward. And so I think that we kind of do a disservice by saying, oh, these far right people are beating up the more traditional old school GOP. That's not what's going on. Like they're, you know, they're in constant tension with one another uh, and they're pulling everybody along with them. And you're seeing you're seeing very little. I'm not saying none, because certainly you have seen some uh, pushback from uh, Mm -hmm. GOP members um, of the House and Senate and, and even just around town. Very few people saying, yeah, no, I, I'm not doing any of this. This is not okay. If we're doing a purity test here, it should be for, you know, uh, racism and homophobia and all these other things, you know, that like the GOP claims to, you know, about freedom and liberty for everybody mm-hmm. and being able to live your life and not pay too many taxes and small government staying out of your life. And you don't see a ton of Republican pushback. You're right, because they can still win votes in Bingham County and in Priest River by pushing some of that stuff and by pushing the narrative that the election was stolen and yeah. uh, and all of those things. So, so well, Blake, <laughs> thank you so much for laying this all out. I know it was a ton of research and stuff for you, but I also encourage people to read your newsletter segment and uh, really appreciate uh, you, you boiling this all down for us because it's pretty complicated. Thank you, Emma. Yeah, I, I'm happy to, and I hope that people find it useful. That's all for today here on CityCast Boise. If you enjoyed the show, you're going to love our Hey Boise newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more local stories from around the city. Bye. Great. Oh, our best episode yet. Truly. Christ alive. Wow.